Okay, first crawl space video. I am on the front right corner of the home. So for reference, there's the front wall right there. There's the corner of the bedroom and here's the right wall of the home. Almost in the very front. It actually opens up into a pretty good crawl space once you get underneath here. It's really tight getting in, but once you're underneath that deck, you can make it around. First thing I'm gonna come in on, I noticed it when I was in the back and I'll show you that when I get there. A little bit damp on the outside, uh, meaning here in the center. If you can tell the difference, there's actually kind of a line right here. This is all just dusty dry. That's great. That's the way crawl space should look. Once we cross this little line right here, we start to get wetter and wetter and wetter. And right now I'm just showing moisture, just damp around the perimeter. If this were in the summertime, I'd be a little bit alarmed by that. Um, that it is now January, whatever, 19th. Um, we've had a couple rounds of rain. I'm not surprised that many crawl space, block and, I'm sorry, pier and beam homes like this start to show a little bit of moisture around the perimeter. So that's okay. Joyce pointed it out for now. Where does that water come from? Great question. I haven't even looked on the outside to see if there's gutters, landscaping, all the rest of that stuff. There is a nice uh, depression right through there. There's a void underneath that beam. Um, that can just be years of erosion and washout. You can actually see where that line, that stain line is, is how high that water has been before and the dirt around here and it just settles and collapses down. So that's issue number one or just noticed uh, thing that I'm gonna point out. Now I'm gonna start talking about the crawl space. The reason I'm actually here uh, discussing some of the material, how everything is holding up. This is a line of sill. This runs left to right on the home. It is a doubled up uh, two, two inches by six inches. You can see one of them here. There's a crease in the middle and then there's a second one. So a doubled up two by six, not as strong as a four by six, but that's okay. That's the way they uh, built them back in the day more often than not. And actually I might make, I might change my mind right there. That is, no, there's that seam right there. Yeah, I can feel it now on top. Okay, cool. Doubled up two by six. It is dry rotted. Um, when I test material, I'm simply using a screwdriver. I'll demonstrate on the subfloor. It should sound like that. And there should be zero penetration. Right here, there's a little bit of penetration. I shouldn't be able to stick my screwdriver in upside down and have it hold. That's minor dry rot. This is a different type of material than we have in your floor joist right here, running front to rear on the home right here. Floor joist holds up the subfloor and then holding up the floor joist is the sill like I already mentioned. Uh, I, I, it does happen a lot in old homes. These homes built in the 50s, the material isn't like they were using before that in the teens, um, in the early 20s, and not as good as today. But it's what they had back then. Uh, it has a little bit of dry rot. I shouldn't be able to do that. And when I stick it in there, listen for the crunch. I shouldn't be able to break apart like that. I'm just gonna take off a small section. You can tell it really just turns to solid dust. I mean, that's all that dust. It just fell apart in there. That's dry rot, okay? Um, I shouldn't be able to break it apart like this. That material is weak. Need to be aware of that. I don't know how widespread this is, but right here on the outside, it's even worse. I mean, this is just not even me shoving it. This is just kind of two fingers and then it gets a little bit better right there. All right, so there's your seal, rotted out. Floor joist also showing the same. I shouldn't be able to do that to the floor joist. It also breaks. You can see all that crud falling down. I don't know why I'm even breathing this in, but I am. Um, next joist over also has the same. This joist over here also has the same. And what actually caught my eye right here is this gap. It almost looks like a cut, except when you go to the other side, it's not a clean break. So I don't actually know what that's about. Let me grab my screwdriver. Let me pry in there a little bit and see what this looks like. It's flaking off, not quite as rotted as maybe some of this other. So I really don't know what that's about, but it's there. You can see these other stretch fractures in there. You can tell where some damage has been done. Um, and so I'm just gonna continue to crawl around, poke and prod and see where the rest of this stuff is bad. One other thing that I'm gonna point out while I'm here, this is your concrete beam. On top of that concrete beam is the mud sill. Mud sill is a two by four. It's holding up this first floor joist and everything above. Uh, that one was just a, not even a shove, just two fingers straight in and it goes all the way to the hilt. So if I were to pop up on this, it's gonna break. If you watch, you can see all this junk that falls out and that's not necessarily junk. That's actually the way that's chewed up and been damaged. 
now that I have a big section off, I can start to pry a little bit away and let's see what we have inside. This over here is looking a lot more like termite damage than this was. The way it looks and it's really weak. I'm not seeing anything active. If you're not on a termite program, you certainly should be at this point going forward. But this whole mud sill is rotted out.